Hi Daniel. Hi, how's it going? Ah, I'm fine, and you? Oh, no bad. Uh, it was a good week for you? I think it was a great week. And your session, you are happy? Uh, it was okay. Okay, fine. Uh, can you describe your job at Microsoft? Sure, so uh, I'm what they call at Microsoft a program manager, which is kind of hard to define. Uh, but uh, essentially I work with a, a team of very smart developers and testers uh, and they build a, a great technology and then I get to come here and talk about it. Okay, but today you change your field before uh, everybody uh, has discovered you with TPR um, debugging tools, but now you're working uh, on a new library? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's not a big of a change. So. Uh, when I moved from uh, Microsoft in the UK to Microsoft in the uh, US, uh, I joined the uh, Parallel Computing Platform team and specifically the Parallel Debugger. So in the previous uh, cycle for Visual Studio 2010, uh, my team offered the Parallel Debugging features that you are familiar with for both TPL and PPL. And then within that same team, uh, we have the runtime and programming models that we developed TPL and PPL in the previous release. And now in the next release in Visual Studio 11 uh, developer preview that's out there already, you can find C++ AMP. So now I'm responsible for, for that. So it's a very small move within the parallel computing uh, platform. Okay. Uh, a question. Uh, Suppose uh, I'm currently the developer using CUDA C or OpenCL. Uh, why I need to use C++ AMP? So uh, I don't think we've introduced C++ AMP first. I'll oh, just say okay. a couple of uh, yeah, a couple exactly. of words about that. So uh, yeah, with C++ AMP, essentially we allow C++ developers to take advantage of the GPU uh, for compute purposes. And that GPU can be a discrete GPU. It can be now you're seeing uh, companies bringing the GPU and CPU together. You're going to see in the future companies doing more versatile data parallel hardware. Mm -hmm. And C++ AMP is designed as a data parallel API, which today happens to target GPU, but in the future could target uh, other kinds of, of hardware. So it's a data parallel API that today lets you take advantage of the GPU for compute purposes. So if you have a data parallel algorithm, mm -hmm. uh, then you can take that and offload it to the accelerator, as we call it, which uh, like a GPU, uh, and then you get the results much uh, back faster. So that's what C++ AMP is in a, in a nutshell. What was your uh, question? Uh? My question is because GPU is very famous uh, in financial market and some uh, research uh, field, and CUDA and sometimes OpenCL is uh, large in use. And the, my question is, uh, why we need to shift to C++ AMP if there is any reason to shift uh, on this library? Sure, so uh, I think what you're saying is that there's already a couple of approaches that you can take advantage of the GPU. Uh, and, and you mentioned a couple of those, and, and there's more, like HLSL from Microsoft also allows you uh, to do the same thing. So whenever you're comparing different approaches that achieve that seemingly achieve the same thing, mm -hmm. that you got to uh, balance what are your priorities, what are your criteria, how do you choose, and, and then based on that, decide which technology is better for you. So uh, if you're just asking, why should someone shift? Well, if they're happy with what they're using today, they shouldn't shift. Like when, uh, when I was using technology before I joined Microsoft, just because Microsoft brought out technology doesn't mean I'm gonna shift it. If I'm happy with what I am, I stick with it. But whenever something new comes on the market, you gotta look at it, of course, and evaluate what benefits does it bring, and do I wanna do those benefits apply to me? So with C++ AMP, some of the benefits are hardware portability. And the hardware portability that C++ AMP delivers is second to none. So uh, you were in my session, so you saw uh, the demo I showed with a, a single binary uh, executing and taking advantage of two GPUs, one from AMD, one from NVIDIA, at the same time. Uh, and that is something that nobody else can claim. So there's levels of hardware portability, and, and this is what we are talking about. Single binary, not a source level compatibility. One compiler that you can distribute and take advantage of hardware. So that's one of the benefits. So if someone is attracted by that, then take a closer look to C++ AMP. Another, of course, is uh, productivity. So with C++ AMP, you use the same compiler for both your CPU and GPU code, and it's the same compiler you know already, the Visual C++ compiler that comes uh, from Microsoft. You use the same toolchain, the same debugging experience, and I demonstrated uh, that today. The same debugging experience, editing experience, profiling, everything that you get in Visual Studio is exactly what you'd use for C++ AMP. It's not a separate language, a separate toolchain that you have to go and learn and acquire. So uh, that really speaks to the productivity. Uh, and of course, if you look at the API, 
uh, which I guess we won't do in this interview, but uh, uh, people can go and look at my session and look at the codes, you see that it's a, it's a very minimal API. So one of our goals was Hello World with C++ AMP fits on half a page. It's not something that you have to write tons and tons of code with. And when you look at the API, just, it just makes sense. It's a very minimal uh, API, minimal additions. So all of those things together uh, are, are claim to productivity. And if someone wants to put that to the test, I really encourage them to go and write the same thing in another approach and in C++ AMP and see which one is easier to learn to write in the first place, which one is easier to read later to maintain, which one is less lines of code, uh, you know, which one is gonna be uh, easier to extend, those kinds of things. So productivity is another very big uh, thing. So that will be something uh, that may attract some people to it. And of course, performance. And again, I demonstrate the performance benefits. And just by offloading to the GPU, we get that uh, tremendous performance for data parallel algorithms. So those are some of the benefits. Uh, without then going further into details, people can decide, are those appealing to me? Or am I happy with what I have today? And then they can decide what to do. Yes, I, I understand. Uh, there is another point uh, you introduced this uh, morning, it's about the standardization, about uh, C++ AMP. So, uh, have you some news about this standardization? Right, so uh, what we've uh, exactly announced is that our intent to make the C++ specification open. So we'll take C++ AMP and we'll, the specification of, because uh, C++ AMP is essentially a library at the end of the day and a key new language addition. So we're going to take that spec and just make it open so any compiler vendor or hardware vendor with a compiler either way can take and implement it in their tool. And that can be on other platforms. So we're actually working with compiler vendors already. Obviously, it's, I don't want to leak their information. They'll announce it when they're ready. Okay. We're already working with other compiler vendors so they can implement this and offer it through their tool chain on any platform that they want. And uh, when we announced this technology back in June, actually during the keynote, uh, we did announce uh, that uh, uh, at AMD's conference, that AMD is intending to implement this in their uh, reference compiler uh, as well. So there's, I think people will be happy with when we ship uh, with what will be available. Great. The GP, GPU programming needs a solid understanding of a GPU thread organization. It's still true with C++ AMP? So uh, when you program the GPU, uh, you treat threads uh, differently to what you do on the CPU. So the CPU uh, threads are, are heavyweight. So the context switching between threads is expensive. Uh, starting up a thread or killing it, all that is expensive. The GPU threads are much more lightweight. Uh, so you can have a whole bunch of them and you don't care about the, you don't, almost don't care at all about the context switching or, or start them up. And actually, you control exactly how many threads you want for a computation. So, um, so with C++ AMP, you take a parallel for each call, uh, you pass the lambda, that's uh, what uh, some people may know as a kernel, and you take that lambda and you say, I want this to be executed by n threads. So you can say, you know, by a million threads. So you say how many threads you want. And further, uh, and if you look at the syntax, you'll see how simple it is. You can also specify what the thread indices are going to be. So you know exactly what thread indices you're going to get for those 1,000 threads. And then when the uh, lambda goes and gets executed on the GPU by all those threads, you know exactly what index is getting passed into you. So you perform exactly the same operations. The only thing that changes is the index that gets in, the thread ID. So in that regard, uh, yes, you actually control the threads uh, uh, that execute the GPU. Beyond that, for a our, our simple model, you do not need to do anything else. Okay. The CUDA ecosystem is large. For instance, we have specific libraries like Kublas for math computation. Do you have any plan to do the same with C++ AMP? Right, so uh, using libraries so you don't have to uh, invent, reinvent the wheel and, and write your stuff. It obviously really helps productivity of applications that need that kind of thing. We haven't shipped uh, C++ AMP yet and we're not planning of shipping in the box any libraries. The typical approach Microsoft takes is to use the ecosystem to develop those things. Mm -hmm. But also we could do it ourselves as an out-of-band uh, release, maybe even at the same time as, as when we ship. 
So obviously we're not in the market yet, there isn't a rich library ecosystem, but we are considering and we're working on prioritizing in what order we want to see what kind of libraries. Should it be linear algebra, should it be FFT, should it be some face recognition library, there's so many different domains. Yes. Uh, so we're largely going to, uh, we look forward to feedback from uh, customers, what kind of libraries they'd like to see, and then we'll uh, uh, enable the community and ourselves to uh, contribute to that effort. Fine. Um... CPU card provide very efficient memory cache. In CUDA, we can use this cache in collaboration of synchronization API. Uh, I've used the same notion in C++ AMP. Right, so the uh, essentially anything where the GPU has something which is specific to the GPU and different yeah. to the CPU, of course, we do expose uh, in C++ AMP. So uh, you don't have to take advantage of that in order to use our API. But for maximum performance, you would want to do that. So essentially, on the, on the GPU, you have, in a simplified introduction, you have the global memory, the, the local variables that your thread uses, and then you can organize your threads in tiles. And then when you're organizing in tiles, you can use tile static uh, memory. And that tile static memory has the same value for uh, all the threads in a tile. It's a cache. Uh, so, so some people refer to it as a cache. Yeah. You could think of it essentially as a program programmable cache. Okay. Because uh, unlike the CPU where you have a cache which is automatically managed for you, mm -hmm. uh, on the GPU, due to the kind of algorithms you write, you don't revisit that uh, data in a way that it would be automatically cached for you. You have to say, hey, take that thing and put it in the cache and then I'm able to access it, and it's a much faster access pattern uh, to access the, uh, the, the data there. So that's why some people refer to this as a programmable cache, some people refer to this as shared memory. Yeah. Uh, we refer to this tile static memory, because essentially it's a static piece of memory across a tile of threads. And of course we support that program model, and uh, developers can use that to take the maximum advantage of the, uh, of the GPU. Perfect. Um... Currently, I'm using as an inside product to di di diagnose my CUDA kernel code. Uh, which kind of tools do you will provide uh, to di diagnose uh, C++ AMP? I suppose it will provide my Visual Studio. Exactly. Yeah. Whenever you say, "Oh, okay, yeah, what are you going to do about this? What tool?" Well, it's Visual Studio. So uh, we don't need to get like an add-in or uh, or some separate tool. You got Visual Studio, you got the tools, you got the debugger, you got the profile, it's just all in there. Yeah, and uh, we have the opportunity to see the kernel code running and watch every variable uh, easily? Uh, right, as easy as you can on the CPU. So essentially, the entire debugging experience that uh, Visual Studio customers are familiar with is available to C++ AMP. You can hit breakpoints, you can step, you can look at uh, variables in data tips in the locals window, in the authors window, the watch window, you can use the call stack window, and we have a new GPU threads window that gives you a nice summary of everything mm -hmm. that's going on, including status of threads, which ones have not yet started, which ones have completed, which ones are blocked on a barrier, which ones have diverged, uh, we have the parallel stacks window that we introduced in VS 2010. It works for the GPU, so I can see the call stacks of all of my threads in a nice coalesced uh, graphical uh, manner. And we've introduced uh, another brand new window, uh, which works for both CPU and GPU, the parallel watch. And that is critically important for data parallel scenarios, because it allows you to look at uh, the value of a variable across all of the different threads. And you can sort and group, add other expressions, and compare them side by side. You can even export to Excel. So there's a very rich debugging experience, and it's all at the source level, preserving the call stacks, even though there is no really no call mm. stack on the GPU, we actually uh, let you debug at the abstraction in which you, you code it. So yes, it's a, it's a great experience. I'm looking forward to feedback. So if I understand, uh, if today I'm using PPL uh, and Visual, Visual Studio 10, I have no problem to start my program in GPU because I know Parallel 4, I know the, stack, uh, the, 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 the window to observe uh, the, the thread, it's an uh, easy jump for me. Yeah, so it's an evolutionary step, you're right. So if you're using today Visual Studio 2010 uh, to use tasks and program against tasks, PPL tasks or TPL tasks, then in Visual Studio uh, 11, uh, we've just taken and added an overload to the existing parallel for each function, still in the concurrency namespace, but it's in another header file, so in amp.h, uh, and in terms of the debugging, all the same windows uh, apply, and we've introduced uh, more. So it's an evolutionary step for people already familiar with PPL, and if you're not, still it's very easy to get started. 
do you have any plan to provide a GPU library for .NET developer? So .NET developers can very easily use C++ AMP by interoping. So you can write your uh, .NET application and then you can write uh, a small C++ DLL that has uh, the, the, uh, the GPU code, the C++ AMP code in it. And then you can interop via the many different ways that you can interop between .NET and, and C++ AMP. Yes, I understand. This is a pragmatic solution that uh, I suppose uh, .NET developer want uh, directly uh, uh, a .NET uh, library to, to program uh, against GPU. Yes, I'm not sure how, uh, how true that is. Um, so uh, we're definitely not planning on offering this directly like in a .NET framework uh -huh. uh, to offer this for Visual Studio uh, 11. Uh, but uh, we've, we've started plans on, the, on a future release. And if people would prefer that we invest the time in providing a wrapper for C++ AMP instead of you doing it yourselves, and instead of us doing something else with those resources, then I'd love to hear it. So if there are people that really want C++ AMP in .NET and they wouldn't use it otherwise, then I'd like to hear that. That will help us plan. Fine. Do you have any um, data about a beta one? Because today we receive a preview, uh, but uh, the beta one will be better. This one is good, but uh, we suppose uh, uh, to have uh, more feature and more stability of all uh, Windows 8 and uh, Visual Studio. Yeah, so uh, what uh, customers got today, uh, got this week here at the Build Conference, and is also available online for free for anyone yeah. to download, uh, is the uh, Visual Studio 11 developer preview. Uh, and uh, the next uh, stage is going to be a beta. Uh, and then uh, and then we'll see what after that. So uh, we'll release the beta when it's ready. Uh, there is no date to announce at this okay, point. Okay, okay, okay. I'd like to say thank you very much, Daniel, for your time. Hey, thank you for asking. And uh, I hope to see you for the next build or another conference. Sure, yeah. I'll be around. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.